This is Mikey Borup for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects course, you will learn the basics to advanced features of After Effects. Interface, shape layers, motion tracking, compositing, and more. During these tutorials, feel free to pause, rewind, and ask questions. I will be using After Effects CC version 12.2, but most of the techniques learned can be used in older versions. In this video, we'll cover everything about text layers and working with text. So let's fire up After Effects and get started. Okay, so here I am in After Effects. I already have a composition right here ready. It's called Text Tool. And so let's get started. Now the Text Tool is up here at the top. You can see you can hit Command T to open up the Text Tool or you can just grab your mouse and click right up there. If I hold and click, there's two different types. There's the Text Tool Horizontal and then the Vertical Type Tool as well. Let's just do the normal one. I'm gonna click and type. Typing is fun, and so is... Now I did that all caps, I was holding down shift, but if I didn't want to do that, let's type normal. Then I can do things over here. I've got this tool where it's the all caps tool, the fake bold, the small caps, subscript and things like that you can add um, some italics to it if your font doesn't have those built in you can use this now over here is the character palette this is where you can change what font what color the size of your font and things like that um, if you've used fonts in any program this should be very familiar to you because they're pretty much all the same the way they work but that's where that is now the downside to this is you can't keyframe all of these individually. How it's keyframed is in the text, there's the source text. So I can come in, click keyframe on that source text, come here, and I can change this to ultralight, and it's gonna, it's gonna change. Or I can come here and change this to all caps, and do all sorts of changes. and everything's gonna change. Now the downside um, to doing it this way is there's no tweening. It's either on or off. It's not going to animate in between the different types of typefaces and things like that. It's just gonna be, it's just gonna be a, a straight switch over. So I'm going to turn this off because there's another way we can do animations on text without doing it just the source text. But before we get into that, let's look down here because there's some more options and this is path options. I click in there and it says path and none. I don't have a path because I haven't created one. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm just gonna make sure my layer is highlighted and I am going to draw a nice curve. And then I can come into this path options, switch that to the mask and the typing is gonna go all along that path. That's pretty darn cool. I can reverse it. We can keep it perpendicular to the path. Force the alignment. You can change where the margins are. And then right down here, it says more options. And let's take a look at that. Um, anchor point grouping is set to character. But if I set it to word, well, then it's, it's all based off of the word. So they're more like cars on a roller coaster. See right here, the whole thing rotates as a whole instead of just the characters going around the curve. So that's the path options. Now, I can also animate this path just like I animate anything else. So I'm coming in here to the mask. I'm going to keyframe the mask path, go forward in time. Click off, gonna grab my selection tool. And move that keyframe, and then move that mask path so that I've got this nice animation. So that's the first part of the text tool. Now the next thing, and there's a lot to this, I'm gonna actually erase this mask. So I'm just gonna click delete. 
and it erased the mask. And so the next part is this over here, it says animate. And there's lots of stuff you can do with this. Um, there's like a whole another world of animations built into a text layer. A text layer has more options than a normal layer does. And you'll see here really quickly what it can do. So I'm gonna click on animate and there's all these different options. First one is enable per character 3D. And what this does is anytime you do any animation, say like rotation, you can rotate into 3D space if you have this enabled. If you don't, it only rotates in 2D space. So let's go ahead and enable that. Off the bat, you can see it puts little bounding boxes around all of the letters. So let's go in and let's do some animation. So let's just do a scale. And what it does is it brings up an animator called animator one, and then a range selector, and then scale. So if I scale this up, then everything is scaled, right? And then if I come into the range selector, it says start, end, and offset. The start is at 0%, meaning at the very beginning. The end is at 100%, meaning at the very end. And you can see there's a little bit taller of a line. Let me zoom in really close. And it goes past the normal bounding box, a little bit higher, a little bit lower. And so if I were to change this range selector, you can see it's changing what is being affected by this property, by this scale property. So right now you can see it going from here to here, and that's what's being affected. If I change the beginning, the start time, now it's going from here to here, and that's what's being affected. And I can animate these just like anything else. So let's go to the end. And then let's go forward a few frames so it's offset, and let's animate the start. And you can see how the start and the end keyframe, start and the end keyframe, they're offset. These top two are moved over a little bit, and what it's going to do as you go through, it's going to look like that. Now, some other things we can do is we can add more properties to this already existing range selector. So if I click here where it says add, I can go property and let's do rotation. And then let's go in the middle where we can see it being affected. And I can change this rotation. Let's do that at 90 degrees. And what's going to happen is these are going to rotate in. Let's add some more. Let's go in property, opacity. Let's bring the opacity down. Maybe not down all the way. Let's bring it to 50%. Let's add some more to this. Let's add, oh, we already have scale. Let's add some more to this. Let's add down here where it says blur. We can blur this. And maybe let's go into the scale and have the scale a lot bigger. So we can start to see there's some kind of cool stuff you can do with with text effects. Now let's do something a little bit more practical and let's create a type on effect. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to delete this animator and let's start just with fresh text. Let's come in and what we want to do is we want to do an opacity so it's going to bring up a new animator and a new range selector. Let's come into the range selector. First we bring the opacity down to zero. And then what we want to do is we are going to animate the start. Just like that. So let's keyframe the start. Let's go forward in time. Bring the start of the range selector to 100. And then there's a basic type on effect. The only problem is right here you can see it's coming on halfway transparent. And there's a way you can fix that. If we come into the advanced, right here it says smoothness is set to 100%. But if we set that to zero, that means it's either on or it's off, just like that. So there's your basic type on effect built using just the animators in the text layers. Now we can actually do a little bit more to this so let's come in here and let's make it so when it types on, it's initially a little bit bigger of a letter and then it kind of shrinks down. And so for that, I need to actually create a new animator, not add to this one. 
So I'm going to click on text so that's highlighted, go up to animate, hit scale, and then there is our new animator. Let's bring the scale up. Let's do 110. And so what I want as I'm going through, let's go into the range selector, is I want this start time to be slightly offset from this animator one. So I'm gonna just copy these keyframes from animator one, then select over here, and then I'm gonna move forward just two frames, and I use the page down on my keyboard. Page up and page down will move you just frame at a time along your timeline. And then I'm gonna hit Command V to paste, and it's going to paste those keyframes that I just copied. But basically, it's gonna start there at zero, and by the time I get here, it's gonna be to 100%. And as I play through this, you can see that it kind of pops in and then shrinks down. Now, same thing with this, I wanna go into the advanced and bring the smoothness down to zero. So that it's not tweening in between. It's either big or it's small. And I can come in and go, you know what, I like that, but let's make that a little bit more pronounced. So I can bring the scale up. And then also maybe when it first types on, you can make it a little blurry. So let's go to this animator two. And let's add a blur property to it. So there's just lots of stuff you can do with text layers. I'm pretty impressed with the amount of stuff you can do. Lots of stuff you can do as far as with these animators, adding new properties, the range selector, I hope you learned something great, and let, just to recap, um, we talked about the text tool, um, how to add a path, and have the text follow a path. We also talked about keyframing the source text, and then using these animators. Thank you for watching and participating in this course. Feel free to comment and share this video with others. In the next video, we'll talk all about shape layers. Again, this is Mikey Board for PremiumBeat.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.